News at 10. Two shootings less than six hours apart in Tuscaloosa, one person in police custody. Good evening, I'm Jabari Pruitt. In tonight's top story, WVUA 23's Yasmin Panetta has been following this story. She joins us live now with the very latest. Yes. Jabari and Captain Gary Hood says that they feel there are there may be some connection in the two. We believe these two individuals have been uh, in an ongoing feud for the last several weeks. And if so, even maybe a, a, another couple of months, we have reports um, involving both of these uh, the suspects and the victims in this case um, in, in altercations and apparently some shootings involved in both of them. Here are the facts on both. At approximately 9.30 p.m. Saturday night, Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's deputies responded to a call on Warrior Cemetery Road. Once they arrived, a 19-year-old white male victim was being airlifted to UAB Hospital with gunshot wounds. Captain Gary Hood from the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office says, according to a witness, 41-year-old Larry Wilcutt was the shooter. Investigators later arrested Wilcutt and charged him with attempted murder. The second shooting happened nearly five hours later. Two people were shot at the Playhouse nightclub on 10th Street near Stillman College. A 19-year-old black male was shot multiple times. He was taken to DCH Hospital. The other victim, a 21-year-old man, was also shot. Captain Hood says it's unclear what the motive was. We have learned Larry Wilka is in the Walker County Jail. We will have much more tomorrow at 5 and 6. Reporting live in the studio, Yasmin Pineda, WVUA 23 News. All right, yes, thank you. A controversy of gun bill in the legislative session. We're glad to be with you tonight. I'm Jabari Pruitt. In our top story, WVUA 23's Yasmin Pineda joins us live. And Yasmin, how controversial is this bill? From the Tuscaloosa County Annex, that's also a voting precinct in Tuscaloosa. Jabari, what have you seen so far today? Well, Lynn, Alabama Secretary of State John Mayer predicts a slightly higher voter turnout because of the president's involvement. Now, he estimated between 12 to 15 percent of registered Republican voters to head to the polls today, which could be anywhere between 400,000 to 450,000 voters. But he does not expect that turnout to be as high as the primaries back on August 15th. Currently, the Senate seat is held by incumbent Luther Strange, who was appointed by former Governor Robert Bentley back in February. Strange was also endorsed by President Donald Trump, who held a campaign rally for him last week. Now, his opponent, Roy Moore, led a nine-candidate field in the primary with 39 percent of the votes to Strange's 33 percent. Now, Moore also drew some big-name supporters, including former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, who led a rally for him in Montgomery last week. I think that uh, the president and Governor Palin and Vice President Pence's appearances here, along with other celebrities, obviously have influenced the way that people are viewing this election and the national attention that it's actually received. And I can't help but believe that if there is an increase in participation at any level, it must be attributed to those people. Now, whoever wins tonight will face Democratic candidate Doug Jones in the general election, which is December 12th. Live tonight from downtown Tuscaloosa, Jabari Pruitt, WVUA 23 News. Well, Lynn, it's still a very active crime scene, if you can see directly behind me. Now, details are limited, but right now here is what we do know. A two-car crash leaves one person dead. It happened just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, I did talk with the investigator to kind of see exactly what happened, but we're told that is still being investigated. And, of course, we will stay on the scene and bring you more information as it becomes available. Reporting live from Duncanville, Jabari Pruitt, WVUA 23 News. Good evening, Jack. Now, I sat down with George Dockery, owner of OK Tires, and he says he wouldn't feel right if his employees were not in good hands. WVUA 23's Jabari Pruitt is live from the First African Baptist Church in Tuscaloosa with more Jabari. Well, Lynn, in less than an hour, law enforcement and the community will come together. Now, joining me live is Tuscaloosa County Sheriff Ron Abernathy. And, of course, Sheriff, thank you so much for talking to me. Now, first of all, just talk to me a little bit about what's the purpose of tonight's forum? Well, it's all about our community coming together to solve problems like you like you just spoke about. Uh, that's it. And the, and the way we do that is through positive communication. And that's what we're coming out from a law enforcement and hope in the community as a whole to make us a better place. Now, you know, we hear a lot about Black Lives Matter, uh, Blue Lives Matter. 
What do you think it will take for everybody to realize that all lives matter? Well, I think we all have the same common goal. We all want a great place to live, to raise our families, to have good jobs. And that's what our focus has to be. And we just all have to realize and, and, and learn from our neighbors what their situation is also. Now, is it a scary time to be in law enforcement? Well, it is a, it is a, a dangerous time more so than what it has been potentially in the past. And, and our officers are on more of alert status at this point, but it, 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 we're trained for this. All right, Sheriff, thank you so much. Now, of course, that forum starts at 6 o'clock. It's sponsored by WVUA 23 and the Tuscaloosa News. It's from 6 until 8 o'clock here at First African Baptist Church in downtown Tuscaloosa. And, of course, I will have much more tonight coming up at 6 o'clock. But for now, reporting live in Tuscaloosa, Jabari Pruitt, WVUA 23 News. Well, Tamika, the tire store has been a staple in the West End community for decades. But according to Tuscaloosa police, what the manager was doing there was anything but OK. Hubert Scarborough, general manager for OK Tire Store in West End, was arrested for trafficking marijuana after numerous complaints of illegal activity. On August the 2nd, agents were able to um, conclude that investigation where um, a transaction occurred and there was three pounds of marijuana um, that was included in that transaction. Um, the business manager was arrested later on. I think it was August the 16th when he was actually arrested. OK Tire Store has been at the Stillman Boulevard location for nearly 50 years. Tonight, only this sign on the front door saying closed as of August 17th. No, the business did not have anything to do with it. It was just that the manager was, was doing illegal activity at the business. That particular business serviced a lot of people in West Tusc Tuscaloosa, and they were familiar with the manager. They trusted him. Tuscaloosa police said the business wasn't shut down because of the drug bust. WVUA 23 News spoke with George Dockery, owner of the OK Tire Store. He wouldn't go on camera but says he's highly disappointed. Nor would he go into any details but says he has future plans for the West Tuscaloosa location. District 1 City Councilwoman Phyllis Odom says the business will be a great loss to the community. It's very sad to me. I, I'm... I'm, you know, I could probably deal with anything else, you know, as far as them closing, but to have a legal uh, activity within the store is just um, beyond my comprehension. Well, Jack, health officials say they wouldn't confirm if anyone in that Mayfair neighborhood has Zika, but they had to check it out. Residents in the Mayfair subdivision in Tuscaloosa says health officials have been going door to door doing environmental inspections. I saw someone in my backyard and that seemed very strange. So naturally I opened the door, did the normal thing you do where you go, can I help you? <laughs> and so it seemed a little suspicious, but he very quickly calmed my nerves uh, and explained why he was there. And it was someone from the health department, the county health department. And they were looking for possible mosquito habitats because someone in the neighborhood had Zika. According to Dr. Scott Harris with the Alabama Department of Public Health, currently Alabama has 39 confirmed Zika cases, but no confirmed Zika cases in Tuscaloosa County. That all of those are travel associated cases. Those are people who left the country and went somewhere and got Zika and then came back here and were diagnosed. They did not catch it here. Harris says when there is a concern, they must take it seriously. Any citizen that contacts the health department and is concerned about uh, for example, you know, the neighbor's pool next door is neglected and is breeding mosquitoes or if they have, you know, a, a drainage problem in their neighborhood because the, uh, the ditch is overgrown and there's standing water and, and they're generating mosquitoes. Harris says this time of year, mosquito activity is less than it was just a few weeks ago, especially during a cold snap. But that's not the case during the spring months. We have a lot of mosquitoes around here. We try to keep that sort of thing minimized and not have any standing water and be careful about where we place things. So we, we're careful. Now, health officials say the mosquito that carries Zika can breed in any small amount of water. Reporting live from the newsroom, Jabari Pruitt, WVUA 23 News. Two shootings less than six hours apart in Tuscaloosa. One person 
in police custody. Good evening, I'm Jabari Pruitt. In tonight's top story, WVUA 23's Yasmin Panetta has been following this story. She joins us live now with the very latest. Yes. Well, Tuscaloosa continues to add new businesses and people are excited about the newest additions. WVUA 23's Madison McLean joins us live tonight. And Madison, what is about to come? Well, tomorrow is the last Northport City Council meeting for the mayor, Bobby Herndon, who was defeated by mayor-elect Donna Aaron and District 1 City Councilwoman Judy Hayes, who was defeated by Dennis Hembright. The mayor-elect and the new city council members will be sworn into office November 7th. Of course, we will have much more tomorrow at 5 and 6 o'clock. And suspended Alabama Chief Justice Roy Moore has just two days to leave his office. Now, three of his law clerks have already been fired. Now, Moore was suspended without pay last month for the remainder of his term for violating judicial ethics when he ordered Alabama's probate judges to refuse to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Now, Moore says he will appeal the suspension. A district court bailiff is arrested on ethics charges. Good evening, I'm Jabari Pruitt. Another SEC championship win for the Crimson Tide, 54 to 16. Right off the top tonight, WVUA 23 sports anchor Zach Tiger joins us live tonight from Atlanta with more. Zach, former Cuban leader Fidel Castro died yesterday and today the world is reacting. Well, more on that story in just a moment, but first a big win for the Crimson and tied in this year's Iron Bowl game. It brought thousands to T-Town. WVUA 23's Catherine Astle has more. And sports director Gary Harris is live tonight in our newsroom. And Gary, it was a good game, but it was also a nail biter. Certainly in the first half it was Jabari. And October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and DCH Hospital will give free mammograms tomorrow. WVUA 23 Sheila O'Connor joins us live tonight from our newsroom with more. Sheila. And the NAACP want to take action after a controversial display that was found hanging outside a Tuscaloosa apartment building. WVUA 23 Sheila O'Connor joins us live now with more on this story. Sheila. Two Alabama fans are arrested after allegedly vandalizing the LSU Tiger Eye. In tonight's top story, it happened last night at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Now, sources say the two people arrested are Alabama students. 18-year-old Timothy Foley and 18-year-old Sean McGinty, both from Maryland. Now, they were arrested after hopping the fence and entering the playing field. Now, they are charged with criminal trespass. Well, turning our attention now to the weather, Alex Puckett is here with a first look at that forecast. Alex, good evening. A big win for Alabama over Tennessee today. WVUA 23, Zach Tiger joins us live tonight from our newsroom. And Zach, it was a big blowout today. 